Hey everybody, this is the Scotsman from Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. We just want to show you this 6010 uphill uh, drag method with a small gap, 16th gap. But um, it's a 5 inch Schedule 80. You can see us here putting a nickel landing on it. And we'll use a saw blade for the gap, which is about a 16th. And then your tacks, we're going to put four because we're going to take a little bit longer for filming purposes. But uh, usually we just put two, one at the bottom and one at the top. And uh, we'll be running this in the 5G position. So that's a little bit, uh, a little bit different from the 6G. Uh, most everything out in the field is 5G or 2G. Uh, there's not a whole lot of 6G wells in the field. I think that the testing facilities just are able to save companies money by using the 6G. I know that when I was coming up in the Navy, everything was, you, to qualify in every position, you had to do a 2G and a 5G, it wasn't no 6G. So, uh, as you can see here, we're having some fun with it, but um, move your saw blade around as you're tacking it. Just stick a corner in there. You won't be able to get that saw blade out if you leave it all the way through the pipe, so. And this method, this drag method, is by far the quickest, fastest way to put a root in on the 6010. It's probably 10 times faster than uh, the jacking method. So um, it's just like downhill, but you're running uphill. And if uh, you're going to have to have a good machine to do this, you're going to have to have a Lincoln or something with some good arc force. Uh, if you can turn the arc force up, and once you get it to pop through to the inside of the to the inside of the pipe. Uh, pretty much that arc force will grab that rod and I usually just hold it with one hand and you can feel it it's like it's, it's like nothing else you felt before it, it just grabs that rod and pulls it all you have to you could almost just let go of the stinger and it would weld itself if you have the settings right and the landing and the gap so it's a uh, it's cool thing to do and to figure out once you once you got it down you'll never forget it As you can see, we're having a little bit of cameraman issues. He's always in the way, but um, I just want to tell you about our settings. We're running about anywhere in between 80 to 95 amps, depending on how big of a landing. And the arc force, you need to have a machine that has arc force control, but the arc force is anywhere from seven, plus seven to max arc force. And um, then you can adjust your amps accordingly. I usually do all my adjusting for the amps and arc force when I'm doing the tacks. And that gives me a good idea of how that machine runs and how the rods are. So we got some problems here. One of the pipes, one of these coupons, it was magnetized or uh, been recut and beveled, you know, probably 10 times in the last week so it, one of them had some magnetism we switched the ground over to uh try to combat that a little bit but um you can pull out a gauze meter and and uh check your your pipe to make sure it doesn't have any magnetism but uh you know ground your, your ground the rods the age of the rods um if you've left them out a lot of that has to do with um how that arc performs and and uh, if you got the arc riding one side of the bevel with you can kind of point the rod away from the bevel it's riding and, and, and try to fix it that way. And, uh, you know, I always like to shake the rod back and forth a little bit as I'm coming up. And, and that helps out stabilizing that arc in between the two uh, bevels. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this, that there's uh, some tricks that you can use to try to, uh, I guess they call it arc blow, try to combat that. So one of the tips I can tell you about welding this uh, drag method uphill is you're gonna have to uh, free up that right arm or whatever arm you're you're welding with. And you see how fast this is coming up welding right now. We call that letting the big dog eat. So, but you're not gonna be able to do this if you got both hands on that stinger. So my best advice is uh, weld this one-handed. Let the big dog eat. Make sure you're. Angles are right to the center of the pipe with that rod. You can see we had a lot of fun with, uh, making this video. So I hope y'all enjoy it. We got still some more to show you about this route um, after we get done welding it. Uh, like I said, we used the Hobart 
on one side and we use the 5p uh, plus on the other and uh, I'm telling you the Hobarts those new Hobarts they just redid them they're really giving the, the p5s a run for the money hold up I'm coming over your shoulder with it Go. Another tip, um, when, whenever you're grinding tacks, basically what we're doing here is we're welding through the tack and consuming it. When you get through that tack and you're ready to stop, it's like a flicking motion. You can flick that rod out of there real quick and it won't leave, leave a big keyhole for you to open up and you can restart easier. So that flicking motion is important. You can see the profile of this bead that we ran, how flat it is, and it's just beautiful down in there in the bottom. And, and uh, I, I, uh, this is the best, fastest, quickest way you can really get that wedding band effect on the inside root profile, uh, if that's what you're looking for. It takes a minute to master this technique, but uh, once you get it, you, know, you you got it for life. So, speaking of life, Benjamin Franklin, you know, he's on the hundred dollar bill. If you don't know it, he uh, he invented the street lights, and uh, and when he was first trying to introduce this to the public in Philly, he. Uh, he didn't do it by going to town hall and telling everybody they needed to have it and what a good idea it was. He just put one out in front of his house on the street, and then eventually everybody picked up on it and said, oh, man, this is a good idea, and before long, the whole city had them. So all that being said, while words are valuable and important, there's no substitute for leading by example. Our children are not the only ones who pay more attention to our actions than our words. So be encouraged and just uh, stay focused on doing the next right thing. I had somebody tell me one time, if you'll just do what's right, you'll see miracles. And I'm telling you, we have seen some around here. So I hope you all enjoy the video. Another thing real quick. This book, The Pipe Welder's Bible, we give it to all our students. Over 30 pipe welding tests, tips and tricks on how to pass them with instructional videos. Y'all need to get one. Next video is going to be on how to repair a pipe weld with just the x-ray film as a guide for the defect. It's a pretty good video. Y'all stay tuned and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.